It's definitely really special that I get to be a part of the recovery effort here at the park to protect and save an endangered species. Welcome to Outside Science Inside Parks. I'm Cassidy Esposito and this time we're at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore in Michigan. The dunes here offer a great habitat for an endangered species, the Great Lakes Piping Plover. Let's check it out. Great Lakes Piping Plover is actually one of the most critically endangered species in the entire Midwest. Uh, we're talking uh, this year, we're currently at 75 breeding pairs total. It's a species that actually once fell to 12 breeding pairs. So this is a species that was within a hair's breadth of extinction in the Great Lakes. And there's been decades of conservation work trying to protect it, bring it back uh, and, and recover it. So here at the park, we have almost half of the population of piping plovers in the entire Great Lakes region. And I think that is definitely attributed to the fact that the park is protected land and that we're able to do the science that we do here in the park. And in fact, it is the largest freshwater dune system uh, in the entire world, is the, in the Great Lakes. And piping plover is really an emblematic species of that system. They only breed on Great Lakes dune systems, so they're really a key species here. For my internship, I'm a member of the Piping Plover Monitoring Crew in the Wildlife Division of the park. And so our job is to go out and monitor for the piping plovers each day. So we survey transects of the beach in the park um, and we're recording what birds we see. Each bird is color banded with a unique uh, color band code um, so we can identify each individual and know who it is and know where they are in the park and also track them back to their wintering grounds. We try to actually document every single individual and that actually contributes greatly to the science and the understanding of the species. So this is our um, short band sheet. So it has each of the color bands of all the birds that are out on the transect that we're surveying. It's just kind of a cheat sheet to help us to know what birds to look out for um, after we've seen them establish their nesting site. It's been really eye-opening for me that this is a career path that I can take and that again for my job I can spend time outdoors and do field work outdoors while also doing the important analysis and research component of it and working with various partners and getting so many people involved with with the science that we're doing at the park. Natalia has been awesome this year she really has come in with a lot of excitement and enthusiasm you know, bringing some fresh eyes into the project. You know, training young folks and, and being involved with younger biologists, you know, is a satisfying part of my career uh, to see p folks who are really enthusiastic, brilliant young minds uh, that are going to think of the recovery actions of the future. Going out into the field every day and walking lots of miles of beach and when you're not able to find a bird and having to wait for that bird for up to two to four hours and taking turns making sure that bird is coming back can be very challenging. But in the end, I always come back to the bigger picture of the meaning of this work and how my job as a monitor and also as a scientist doing this analysis, how that is just going to improve the recovery effort and the conservation work done by the Plover crew here at the park. Thanks for watching this episode of Outside Science Inside Parks. We'll see you next time.